Good evening, all. I Rapstein with your financial market wrap up, and this wrap up is for Tuesday, the seventh of February, twenty twenty three, just after five thirty p.m. Central Time. Remember, the president comes on in a couple hours now, giving his State of the Union. Tomorrow, we're going to have, I think, a total of six Fed members. They're going to be all over the place. It's, I know there's six of them due to come up. Maybe some will be tomorrow. Others will be during the week. But we have six more coming out this week. That is, uh, I, I looked up the schedule and I can see that. The Fed chair's speech today was interesting. It wasn't even a speech. It was a complete interview. It started off beautifully. I love David Rubenstein. He went right to it. You know, Mr. Chair, 519,000 jobs. Had you uh, known that was coming, that that big, would you have gone to a half point? And uh, you, you saw the Fed chair laugh, didn't really answer the question. Then Mr. Rubenstein also said, do you get that information ahead of time? I told you this man's the master interviewer. If you've never seen him, you want to. And he does pop people. He does business people. He's really a great interviewer. He happens to be co-founder of the Carlisle Group, too, which isn't a small thing. So you look at all that, and it, it is very, very fascinating. So how did the market react to all this? Well, during the interview, the market rallied. It, it doesn't believe the Fed chair. He thinks that the Fed rates are going to go up and stay up, not with a break, until 2024. So much has said that. They're going to keep a very tight, restrictive uh, policy, which is Fed talk. And again, David Roof said it was so funny. He goes, you know, you're the only Fed member I can understand. It's probably because you weren't really trained in economics. You were trained in law. And everybody was laughing at that, which is true, by the way. And uh, that becomes the difficult part. So after the interview, and I'll get to that in a minute, the market tanks. And then by 2 o'clock Chicago time, because it began at 1140, and it was only a half hour or so interview, uh, the market starts coming back. The choppiness was this all the time. Swings like I warned my clients. I said, today's a great day. You can get stepped on before you even know what's going on. And you won't even know why you lost or won. It's just going to be swinging all over. It's exactly what it was. Late in the day, the market came back. I think that what people think is that, number one, the Fed is determined that he said that. Asked why it has to be a 2% inflation number, not three. Uh, he said, because that seems to be what all the central bankers want. I think that's nonsense. I think 3% is probably a more realistic number. He thinks we'll get there. He thinks that we're going to see rent pressure starting to fall down, housing pressure starting to fall, but they can't seem to conquer the service sector of the labor market. And when asked about that, it is a sticky point. I am in the camp where we will find the sticky point that is not 2% and the Fed's going to have a heck of a time getting under it. There's just too many goods out there. And I say that nature, because it's going to be spring and summer, will work against the Fed. Even if the Fed raises rates in the service sector, think of all the outdoor jobs that are going to come back on, be it your gardener, be it servers at restaurants, be it camp kids, be it... Uh, Pools. I mean, it's everything that you can imagine as we go back to warm weather in the in this hemisphere. And I think that works against the Fed in a big way. So the market today became the classic case of first, you don't fight the Fed. He's telling you what they're going to do. And then in the blue corner, don't fight the tape. Well, the tape won at the end of the day because the traders didn't buy into what the Fed said. Now, they'll get to rethink it tonight and ask themselves where they're at. You're seeing a little selling pressure coming in, but it could also be some profit taking. So let's go to the charts and see what we've got. There's certainly nothing there that looks bearish on the weekly chart of closes. You're up half a percent. You haven't run very far. Half a percent's nothing to hang your hat on. When we take a look at the daily bar chart, you can see the pretty broad range you had today and how the market did come back by day's end, closing near the high. The pattern in the market is still one of higher lows, higher highs. You've been doing this for quite a while. Look at this. Look at how it's just been consistent with it. The support of the market is the 18-day average, but with today's action, you change things a little bit. If you take out today's low, either tomorrow, 
which is Wednesday or Thursday, even though we're looking at Wednesday today, but Wednesday or Thursday, the odds are exceptionally strong. You'll go to wherever the 18-day average is. If you don't do it, say la vie, you're in your uptrend. Where's the resistance? It's going to stay at the Bollinger Bands right now. And I think the market's telling you the pros realize that and they keep it each time you're hitting it. They're dumping against those numbers. That's what's going on. Momentum wise, are we embedded? And the answer is yes. You flirted with losing it all day. And it gave me a fit in my um, ETF spider video and stock video this morning because I, I told some of my traders yesterday that uh, we're buying. I said, today you got to take some money off the table before the Fed chair speaks. You got to cut some of the position down because you don't know which way it'll go. But I, I said, it still looked good to me. Well, here, you can't count tonight's action because you don't know if it's going to stay up. But in terms of embedding, both numbers over 80, both over 80 on Monday, both over 80 on Friday, both over 80 before that. So you have a fully embedded reading. If you haven't taken the enhanced Bollinger Band course, do so. You learn what this is. And it's on our website under education, irapstein.com. But as you see what the market did, it gets to the Bollinger Band, and this is where it's flirting and loses the embedded reading on Monday. So as far as I'm concerned, last night, traders should have gotten out of this market. Yep. Not going through today. My work says that. When's the only time you can re-embed? The day after you lose it. And that's exactly what you did today. If you lose it again, it's called the waffle, then you come back down. So right now, this market's got a hold. That's why I say you watch real carefully today's lows. Barring that, you're still looking to see if you can get to the upper Bollinger Band. You got close to that formation, did not lose in the uh, NASDAQ, the embedded reading. So as long as you've got that until it's gone, I'm bullish. Now, there's another event happening here. You just flipped the 18-day average over the 200. So you have a bullish bias now to the market to at least tack the most recent high. Let's see if you can get up and do that before it breaks back down. I don't see any sign yet that it's ready to break back down. You're overbought in the Dow and you just can't get away from this 18-day average. I think you see it. I've said that every day. And in the Russell, problems. Now let's go here. Let's go to the close today. Here's how the market finished, 80.23. This is where you're at right this minute. You're trying to lose the embedded reading. Now you can't make a decision that you're gonna lose it at 5.40 in the afternoon when the market just opened, but it's certainly warning you this is not the one to buy. And that becomes fun in itself. And that's the beauty of learning how to work with the Bollinger Bands with the slow stochastic. You don't move towards the market that is the uh, starting to flash the weakest signals. If this market's down, let's assume that it's down 20 points. You're going to lose that embedded reading. I'm talking on a closing basis. So I'd be very careful here. In the VIX cash, you're stuck on each rally against the 18-day average. I mean, it's very clear what it is. The market is trying to be bearish with the pattern of lower highs and lower lows. If it drops again to the lower Bollinger Band, my contention is the professionals will write puts again to get back to the 18-day average of closes and then cover those puts at that point. In the March T-bonds, we have a pattern of a higher high and lower low. There is no trend to trade here. And the market is caught between traveling between the resistance of the upper band and the support of the lower. 95% of the time, the market stays within it. And how it comes out of it is often, not always, by developing a tight sideways range and then using the power of spinning within it to burst out one way or the other. So it's trying to form that. It's not doing that in the 10-year notes, even though you hit the upper band and lower, the band is already widened on you. The support here is going to be back at this 113 level, 05, right in that zone. In the dollar index, back over the upper Bollinger Band, I want to point something out. It's rare that you stay over a Bollinger Band in the dollar or under it. 
it'll widen the bands out if it narrows in. I think this is subject to some correction right now. I wouldn't be surprised to see the market pull right back in to the band. Is it trending? It isn't. That means you're not trending in the euro. You did the opposite, higher band, lower. They're just mirror images of each other and you're oversold. I don't know what to do in the currency markets here. And that's my favorite market, by the way, currencies. And the reason is they're the biggest market in the world. When they get going, it's a dream trade. In the British pound, you're down to the combination of the Bollinger Band 200-day average. Bye-bye. I think the shorts have run. I think they're gone. If it goes lower, say la vie. That is a high percentage. Let's step away and see what else uh, comes out of it. When we get into Bitcoin, you lost the embedded reading. I know you're bouncing. Would not surprise me you're at that 18-day average very quickly. I don't see anything there that's saying, oh, let's go buy that. In the Brent versus WTI crude, you're starting to pull back a little bit. When we come to the chart action, uh, you've traded now from the lower Bollinger Band, upper band, down to that. Now the battle's going to be 84.93 to 84.82, which is the 18-day average in the 100. It's pretty clear where that's at. Uh, the market had come down. It's still in a bear trend until it clears some of these highs. Now, that high we can come to. And let me bring you right to it. So the number on that high is 84.19. If that's taken out, you break the downtrends. Here's the market at 84.10, and here's tonight's action so far. So it can easily happen. If it does, you just go back to neutrality sitting there. When we come to the April WTI, way you come to the downside, take out that high, the same thing. Then we come to the rebob gasoline, and I did name it right tonight. And in this market, this is what I did my special report on, where I cover the seasonality, what happens from now into the June timeframe, uh, what's happened in bull years, bad year, uh, bear years, and neutral years in it. I'll give you then the uh, weekly charts, and I give you two sets of daily charts. And I build them from scratch with the swing lines on them, window envelopes. There's a lot of stuff that I'll, I'll throw on these charts for you at times. So you get some fun with it. But this is a big resistance area that you're trying to rally up to. Let's call it 26697 uh, to the 18 day average of 269.95. That's going to be your battle zone in the market. But somewhere along here, I am looking for an important low. I think it's UGA that you can cover if you want to trade the, uh, the equivalent of this using an ETF. I cover that in my ETF tonight. I, I know I built the chart. And it's not one that I follow all the time, and now I'm going to follow it. When we get to the natural gas, you got lower highs, lower lows. You're flirting with losing the embedded reading. 21.61. You close over 21. And I think you're going right up to the 18-day average. You'll get your short covering. I realize that the demand for this is just not there. The weather's too mild. Chicago, we hit 50 almost last night. We're back into the 30s during the day. I'm just giving you because this weather moves across the country. We'll drop a little bit now into the low 30s. Now we're going right back to 50 degrees next week. So that's not as much demand for the heat, my heating bill as it is when I'm running at zero and 10 below. Agreed? You put it all together. You try to come up with a game plan for this, and it becomes fun on, the, on it. And then you try to put together longer-term ideas. And I know a lot of you like that. Well, that's why I do these special reports. Now, I, I today we said I might do another one. I have every intent of doing one more special report this week. I'll either get it done uh, tomorrow or the day after. And I don't know if I'll do a financial one or a commodity one yet. I haven't made up my mind. But I cover it all these details in it. Now, this one happens to be on gasoline, and this is our ad for that. Just remember, you can move your cursor up at any time to the top here. You'll see an icon. Give it a click. It'll take you right to the area for the special reports. You can also go to our website, and under the word research, it'll be there. And if you have trouble, call my staff. They'll work with you. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a great day, and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Take care.